at because some of those symptoms they seem fairly common uh, but tell us what the symptoms they're looking at right now in this particular patient well some of the early ones are, are quite common and can be confused with lots of other things uh, fever someone can develop uh, uh, abdominal pain sometimes they can develop a rash over certain parts of their body uh, red eyes eventually the, the, the all those symptoms sort of get worse and, and Ebola, as you may know, Wolf, uh, sometimes is characterized as well by, by uh, bleeding problems. Uh, the blood just doesn't clot as well, and that's why p patients may have bleeding. Some of it you may see uh, actually, uh, actually be able to observe it. Some of that bleeding can actually occur on the inside of the body as well. But again, it, it's, the definitive test is the test you were just talking about with Jason actually doing a blood test and confirming the presence of the virus and some of the, uh, the antibodies to the virus in the bloodstream. So, I, I missed the last part where you said, how long does the test take to determine whether or not someone actually has Ebola? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, when I was in Guinea, uh, you know, they, they were doing the test there in the field, and sometimes they could get the test results back the same day. Uh, in the United States, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of times they draw the blood, they send it to a particular lab, and it can take a day or two usually to get the results back confirmed. So I, I would guess by tomorrow we'll have a better idea. I should point out as well, Wolf, that the, the hospital has you know, uh, made this known. There have been about a half a dozen patients who have had their blood tested because of concern. Those, those particular patients, their stories were not made public. This patient was. I'm not sure if that's because of heightened concern by the hospital or what that means exactly. But again, we, we just can't say for sure until the, the final tests come back. And, you know, they want to be sure on this. It takes about a day or so. And this particular patient in New York, does the patient have that internal blood clotting problem? Do we know if, if it's gone to that level, or is it just high fever and some gastrointestinal problems? My understanding is it was, was the first, uh, the two things, the fever and the gastrointestinal problems, but also most relevant was the recent travel to West Africa. Uh, that when you're sort of piecing this together, you're, you're looking at the history of the patient in, in total. What are the symptoms the patient has, but also the travel history obviously becomes very important. So piecing those two things together, uh, th there was enough of a concern uh, uh, by the doctors and nurses who were taking care of him to go ahead isolate the patient, get the test uh, performed, and wait for those results to come back. And we should get the results probably tomorrow, is that right? I think so. My, my guess is tomorrow, if it, it, may, it may go into the next day as well because they sometimes send these results out. One thing that you know, I think is worth you know, sort of uh, putting a punctuation mark on is that he isn't going to be in isolation, but we've talked about this several times, Wolf. This isn't the kind of thing that they worry about spreading to other patients in the hospital, spreading to people who are walking uh, around the hospital. This is not an airborne virus. This is something that spreads only when somebody is very sick and they start to actually shed the virus in their bodily fluids. So it's somebody who comes in contact with those bodily fluids who's not protected. So while we don't know the, the particular story with this patient, we don't know if, in fact, he has the Ebola infection. Uh, in terms of concern for the, the hospital population at large or the population around the hospital, is, is still very minimal. Very minimal indeed. And, uh, and as I say, I don't want to overly alarm people in New York City. There have been at least that we know of six cases of individuals who have come to the United States from West Africa.